All right, you guys, welcome to the video. Thanks for clicking. I'm doing an unheard of idea before, a tier ranking for Warhammer 40K. This tier ranking is going to be ranking the beginner friendliness of each faction in the game. going to be going over what I think are the best factions to get into if you're brand new to this game. So without further ado, let's get into it. The highest tier I have made for beginners, these are factions that I think are the best factions you can start with, um, mostly because of cost, really, and also ease of painting. After that, we're gonna have, you'll have a good time. Uh, these are factions that only have one or two issues. Uh, they're still really good starting points, but uh, there's just a couple reasons that I think, you know, they aren't the best for beginners. Number three, we have the should be okay uh, tier, and these are factions that have more than a few problems. There's a lot of things that are also holding them up. Yeah, these are okay places to start. Uh, number four, we have tough choice, but you have your reasons. These factions have quite a few problems, but you must have a really good reason for why you want to pick it. Uh, you really like the lore, you really like the characters, maybe you read a book about this faction and you really, this is the faction you're interested in, but it's not going to be the easiest place to start. Number five, we have GW Hates You. These are the factions that are hardest to get into, the hardest factions to build an army for, and just the most likely factions that, you know, you'll quit before you finish, really. First of all, there is a golden rule of Warhammer 40k I'd like to get it straight. You should pick whatever faction you think is the coolest. Automatically. Go to the local game store and you should pick what you think looks the coolest because that's where you're gonna have the most fun. You're gonna have the most fun if you like it. That being said, this tier ranking is just supplementary for if you've picked a faction and you have no idea and you know now I'm letting you know that you've actually picked a really difficult faction to get into. First faction we have here is Eldari or Eldar, Space Elves. Uh, I put Eldari in should be okay. This is a good starting point actually. Uh, Eldari are a pretty, more than pretty good, they're actually a very good faction in the rules currently. Um, but the only thing I don't like about them is that their models are pretty old. Uh, you've got some pretty wonking looking uh, space elf faces, they're pretty weird looking. Um, I don't know, and as a starting faction, for a lot of these I'm going to be giving them uh, lower rankings if they're older because you're going to have these models forever. Um, it's just the look of them. They don't look right when you put them up against a, a brand new model. It's just obvious that they're outdated. And so for that, I would say you'll be okay, you'll have a good time, you'll have a really cool army that does very unique, it's very cool, but they're going to look old. Uh, next we have Chaos Demon. Chaos Demons I'm also putting in should be okay. I know, two after the other. But I'm putting Chaos Demons there because uh, they have a few problems right now. Um, obviously, if you don't already know, there's four Chaos Gods. And so each Chaos God kind of has their own um, flavor, really. Like, they're very different. But right now, the way it's played is that it's kind of always Chaos Undivided. And that's just not really how the lore makes sense. The gods don't like each other that much. Like, <laughs> they're always trying to, like, vie for attention. And so I think most Chaos Demon players when they're building their list, they're really building it for one god, and the rules don't really reflect that right now. So, rules-wise, your army's gonna be a little weird. Um, that being said, Chaos Demons have some of the coolest and most unique models, so that's really what's keeping them higher up on this list. Um, yeah, building is gonna be pretty fun, painting's gonna be pretty fun, I think they're fairly easy to paint and build, I mean, most of them are really just like one or two colors, uh, so I think you'll be alright there. But yeah, rules wise, they're a little funky right now. All right, next up we have Blood Angels. Blood Angels, um, like a lot of the Space Marines you're gonna see in this list, I'm putting in, you'll have a good time. All right, Blood Angels, not exactly made for beginners, I would say, at least not perfect for beginners, like super beginner friendly. This is a good place for them. Blood Angels, like most of the Space Marine factions I'm gonna be talking about, um, they have too many choices a little bit, and I would say it's not the most beginner friendly. Definitely is beginner friendly, but there's other factions that beat it out. So for that reason, you're definitely gonna have a good time. Uh, you've got Dante, you've got those golden sanguinary flying dudes. I don't play Blood Angels, I don't know that much about their lore, I'm sorry. I know they have some really big fans, so I'm sure I'm gonna get torn to shreds. They're all basically vampires. Yeah, they're a good place to start, like most space marines are. This is Gene Stealer Cults up next. Uh, I put Gene Stealer Cults in tough choice, but you have your reasons. Um, there's really one big thing keeping this up from GW Hates You, and that is that they have a really good combat patrol. And combat patrols 
I'm going to be mentioning a lot in this video, are a great place to start when you're starting your army. If uh, your army has a good combat patrol, it's definitely going to be helping you out. Like Blood Angels, previously spoken about, has a pretty good combat patrol uh, as far as the Space Marines go, so that, that also helps them out. Gene Stealers, probably the second most expensive army to start, cost-wise. Um, if you don't already know, uh, each unit that you buy has like points, and then when you're building your army, it's uh, it's made up of like the certain number of points that you and your opponent have agreed upon. You have to spend a lot of money to get 2,000 points, which is considered a full army. Yeah, you have to buy a lot of stuff, basically, for Gene Stealers is what I'm trying to get at. And so for that, I would say GLU hates you, but they gave you one little combat patrol, good place to start, and for that, this is just a tough choice now. It's no longer an impossible choice. Uh, they are very cool also. I mean, they're basically like humans that have been taken over by like alien parasites, by the Tyranids, and they're no longer fully human, and, and, and also they're supposed to be like miners, I think. That's why a lot of them have like dynamite, and, and like they have like uh, mining vehicles, and, and they're really cool but expensive. Uh, next we have the Chaos Knights. I might as well do both the knights at the same time because they're really just two different flavors of the exact same thing. I'm putting both of the knight factions in tough choice, but you have your reasons. I think that knights are super cool. All right, they are cheap. Um, you only have to buy a few big knights to have a full army, but that being said, you also can't really play a smaller game. Um, I liked, when I'm building my army, to play like kind of an escalation, they call it, where, you know, you and your friends who are maybe also starting new armies can meet up and, you know, you're growing your armies together. So the first couple of games you have are only like 500 points. You can't really do that with knights because 500 points is like one knight, one big knight, or maybe like a couple little knights. For that reason, it's kind of hard to recommend these guys as a starting faction. Um, you're just playing the game like on such a different level because you're going to be having such fewer units. Um, you're not really getting like the full experience. Um, that being said, they're not in the hates you section because they're still super cool to build and to paint. Uh, the Chaos Knights especially are some of the coolest models. There's that one knight that has like the metallic tentacles. I'll try and put a picture of it up here. Uh, yeah, that is like super cool. I'd love to paint that. Um, but game wise, you're just playing a very different game. So I don't know if it's the best place to start with. Uh, Yunari, not a real faction. Uh, next we have Adeptus Mechanicus, Admech. That was the first army that I started with. Um, for that reason, I'm also putting it in GW Hates You. Yeah, sorry Admech players out there. Uh, we're a passionate bunch, but man, I really feel like we get screwed over a lot. I don't know. Um, we're kind of forgotten about. We really were two factions that were like kind of put into one. It used to be Adeptus Mechanicus and Skatari. Uh, and then they were like, well, we don't have enough of either of these, so let's just combine them. At least I assume that's what it was. And now it kind of leans towards the Skatari side, which is more of like, you're basically just Imperial Guard with like a little extra flavor sprinkled in. But they do look very cool. Uh, that's why I started. I followed the golden rule and I fell for it because the models look amazing, but they're incredibly difficult to paint. I would say it's the most expensive. Points per dollar, you're pretty much, it's one for one, which is terrible. You should always be at least shooting for like three or four. I didn't even finish building my army for Admech. I think I have 1,500 points because I just didn't want to buy any more stuff for Admech. It just wasn't fun anymore. Uh, they're also not very good on the tabletop, unfortunately. And for the past two editions, we've gotten, gotten one model each edition. So that's two models in the past like six years. <laughs> I was really excited for the new edition to come out because they were one of the earlier factions to get their rules and then all we got is stilt guy and our rules aren't that much better um, in fact our our main uh, faction rule affects about half of our army so yeah admech not a great place to start all right, next up, let's do Leagues of Votan. All right, where do we put Leagues of Votan? I'm having a tough time between should be okay and a uh, tough choice because Leagues of Votan right now are a tough choice because they have very few units, but I think they actually should be an okay place to start because they're gonna get more this edition, hopefully, probably this year even. So if you started now, it might seem like you have a limited selection, 
but you could buy that combat patrol they have for them. You could even buy one of the holiday boxes if you can get your hands on it. They might already be gone, but you could probably find one somewhere. Just don't pay too much for it. Um, and yeah, you'll have like a really good starting point for the army. And then, yeah, when the new stuff comes out, you'll have a great time getting like the rest of your army. So um, yeah, you should be okay with Leagues of Otan, but right now it might be a little tough. Wow, next let's do Harlequins. Another one. GW hates you. I'm, I don't know how this is happening. We're getting all the good ones. Uh, yeah, GW hates Harlequins. They hate them so much that they took them out of the game. Uh, they were like the elite fighting force of the Eldar, and yeah, now they don't really exist anymore. You can still play it as the Harlequins, but you're, I think you're technically playing Eldari. There's not that many models for Harlequins. Um, it's definitely not a good place to start because you're not really getting a full army. I mean, talk about combat patrols. They don't even have one. They're not an army. Yeah, they shouldn't even count. Um, they're basically a sub-faction. Uh, next we have Death Guard. I'm gonna say Death Guard, you'll have a good time. They're one of the cooler of the Chaos Space Marine factions, that's why they got their own. But right now there's only three, hopefully we're gonna get four divergent sort of Chaos Space Marine factions, and Death Guard is the one that follows Nurgle, the god of decay. Yeah, Death Guard are cool, they have really cool looking marines that are all gross and yucky, and their, um, their demons are also really cool. And they get that bonus because they have their Primarch, Mortarion. Mortarion's one of the best models in the game, in my opinion. Only downside is their combat patrol has a lot of poxwalkers. So maybe buy one of those and then you're gonna have, I think it's 30 poxwalkers. You'll have all the poxwalkers you need. Um, but they're cool, right? Like, I mean, they're if you're running like a demon faction, you're gonna want some demons. So Death Guard are cool, and you'll have a good time. All right, next we have Dark Angels, and this might be a bit of a surprise, but I'm putting Dark Angels in Made for Beginners. Um, yeah, I think I'm putting these higher than any of the other Space Marines, at least I'm planning to right now, because they're in a really cool spot right now. Uh, you have a bunch of new Deathwing Terminators, and you have the Deathwing Knights, which look amazing. And you also have your Primark, so if, you know, I wouldn't buy your Primark first thing, but when you're ready to paint your Primark, he's available. If you're looking for a Divergent chapter, I think Dark Angels are the most interesting Divergent chapter right now. Next up we have Custodes. Uh, they're going in made for beginners. Uh, Custodes are the elitist of the fighting forces in the Imperium. You will not need many models to have a Custodes army. And yeah, their combat patrol is an incredible deal. I don't know how it's so good. It's like, the combat patrol for Custodes is like, it's like two of the combat patrols for Admech, if not more. It's really, really good. So yeah, pick up one of those if you're into Custodes. Uh, it's Henry Cavill's faction, everyone talks about that. Uh, but yeah, that's a pretty fun army. Very melee focused as well. Uh, orcs. Orcs are a lot of people's favorites. I'm putting orcs and you'll have a good time. Um, they're not perfect because uh, it's a horde army a bit. At least one of the ways you can lean into it, it's a horde army. Um, so you'll be buying a lot of orc boys. They have a big variety of models at the very least, and they have a different, like a lot of different ways you can build them. Uh, they have the squigs, uh, they have like the vehicles, uh, they have mechs. Yeah, orcs have a lot going on, but not too much. Um, just a lot, a lot of options I think are pretty good, and they're the goofiest faction also, so if you aren't too serious about Warhammer, which you shouldn't be, um, orcs are pretty cool. Yeah, orcs are a good time. Uh, Tyranids, I really want to put Tyranids in Mage for beginners. Uh, I have a Tyranid army right now, it's currently my favorite army. The only thing that's not keeping Tyranids in Mage for beginners is that it's a horde army, sort of like orcs. It's, But I'd say it's even more of a horde army than orcs. Um, you gotta have a lot of Termagants and a lot of Hormagants, the little guys. And while they're not expensive because they were like the poster boy of the the new edition. So there's a lot of them out there. Um, eBay has some really good prices on Tyranids right now. You just have to paint a lot of them to get a full army. Uh, you can skew it kind of and make a monster list if you want to just do monsters in Tyranids and they have some really good monsters. I'll put some up here. The Norn Emissary is my favorite. I just painted him a while back. Uh, the Tyran effects is super cool. His gun is like the size of some like other factions vehicles. Uh, yeah, Tyranids have some of the coolest, like, organic-looking models. And they're relatively easy to paint, in my opinion. Uh, I've got some pretty good methods for, like, dry brushing and using contrast paints. And rules-wise, they're not that complicated. Uh, you're just kind of throwing bodies <laughs> at the table and hoping it sticks. Yeah, Tyranids, I think, super beginner-friendly, painting-wise and playing-wise. Yeah, they're pretty good.
Uh, next we have Space Wolves. Space Wolves are, you'll have a good time. Yeah, Space Wolves have a, will have a good time. I love how themed they are. I don't know who thought of the Space Wolves, but they were having a really good day. What does 40K need? It needs Vikings, you know? It's like, okay, sure. We have wolves now. We have like werewolf space marines. It's sick, in my opinion. And they have a lot of their own characters too. I think they even have their own Dreadnought, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, if you're into the wolf, Viking theme, uh, Space Wolves are very cool and you'll have a good time. Generic Space Marines are next. Generic Space Marines are honestly made for beginners, but I'm putting them in you'll have a good time because I do have a few problems with Space Marines. Uh, mostly, there's just too many choices. You have to pick your chapter, either invent your own or pick one of the many that already exist. Um, and then from there you have to pick <laughs> what models you're gonna get. You have a lot of options. So this is why it's definitely beginner friendly, but I wouldn't say it's made for beginners because it's not as obvious what you should start with. Like the Dark Angels have a really good combat patrol. Get that. Uh, Custodes have a really good combat patrol. Get that. Space Marines have like six, <laughs> you know? So it's like, you have a lot of choices. And then once you get that, you have to decide what you're getting next. And they get Space Marines get more models than any other faction in the game, and so you're always going to be bombarded with new stuff. And since they always get new stuff, they're also the first to lose stuff, so if you decide to buy some old Space Marines, they could be next on the chopping block. So for that reason, you're going to have a good time, but you're going to have a lot of choices to make, um, so I hope you're ready for that. Uh, next, let's do Grey Knights. Grey Knights, I want to say that you should be okay, but they're an elite fighting force, so you're actually going to, it's this is you're going to have a good time as a beginner, because like Custodes, you don't need to buy that many. Grey Knights are not quite as elite as Custodes, but they're still pretty up there. They do have that one Dreadnought that nobody likes. I think it looks sick. People, I don't know, they think he looks like a baby carrier, but... He's in a full suit of armor, like he doesn't need any more protection. He's gonna be fine. This current edition, they have messed with the, the way magic works, the psychic phase, and Grants are a very psychic focused faction, so, you know, that, people are kind of mad about that, but I, I think you'll be okay. I think they'll fix it next edition, or eventually they'll re remember that Grand Knights are supposed to be, you know, psychically important. Yeah, they have a decent comp patrol, pretty good. They have some pretty good models, a little outdated, not as bad as some of the other factions. I think Grand Knights, pretty good place to start. Mostly because of how elite they are. Should be good. World Eaters. I'm putting World Eaters in... I would put it in Tough Choice, but like I mentioned earlier, they got their Primark, so you'll be okay. Um, this is very similar to Leagues of Votan, actually. They are kind of half an army right now, but they're gonna get stuff soon. Um, they're the newest faction. I mean, obviously they already have a lot of lore. They weren't represented in the game quite as well. And now they have Angron, and now they have the Eight Bound or whatever they're called, and yeah, they just don't have that much stuff yet, but I think they're gonna be getting more stuff this year. So like Leagues of Votan, if you got into World Eaters now, you'll have some good stuff to look forward to later in this year or next year. They're very melee focused, so uh, you're not gonna be doing a lot of shooting. It's a very aggressive play style. Uh, but yeah, World Eaters should be okay. They just don't have a lot of stuff right now. But they're one of the Chaos factions, so you can always supplement that with uh, some extra demons. So you'll be fine. Next we have Black Templar. I'm putting Black Templar with most of the other Space Marines. You'll have a good time. Black Templar are one of the more unique lore flavored wise of all the Space Marines. Uh, I don't think you're allowed to have any librarians. I think they hate psychers and they're very melee focused and they have those like crusader squads which don't even have like fully fledged Space Marines. I think they're kind of like scouts. They have a lot of like religious iconography which is which makes them really interesting i mean a lot of 40k does anyways yeah black templars are very niche they have some pretty good uh models of their own that are like unique to them the emperor's champion i think is one of my favorites he's just, he's just a dude with a big sword he's like ready to take on the world he's really awesome so yeah black templars uh if you're into like the crusader kind of theming of Warhammer 40k, then yeah, they're really they're really just space marines. You're just gonna not be able to use psychers and stuff like that. So they do take away a few of the options of space marines, but they, they add a couple options back. So I think they're pretty cool. Uh, next we have Thousand Suns, another one of the fully fledged Chaos Space Marine factions. You should be okay. I would give it higher, like I gave Death Guard. But I'm bringing it a little below Death Guard because the Combat Patrol for Thousand Suns is a bit abysmal. I know I said that the Combat Patrol for Death Guard wasn't that good either, but I think Thousand Suns might be even worse. You get like 20 of the Zangor and 
I think the Thousand Suns just have better stuff to offer than Zangor. I think you don't even get any actual Marines, or whatever they're called, like the base infantry. I think you just get Terminators. You get like five. So you're buying this. You're buying the Comp Patrol for Thousand Suns, and you get five Thousand Suns. A little disappointing. Yeah. Besides that, they do have Magnus the Red. He does have horns coming out of his chest. I don't know. They're not the most interesting of the chaos factions to me so this movie is a bit of a personal choice they are a little hard to paint that's definitely bringing them down a little bit yeah besides that i would just say that thousand suns they aren't the best chaos space marine faction to get into but you should be okay next we have adeptus sororitus i'm putting adeptus sororitus um, having a hard time between tough choice and should be okay. Mm, I think you'll be okay. They're expensive. I'll give them that. You do need a lot of them, but they do have some really unique looking models. The the tank with the missiles coming out of the organs, incredible. Uh, and they're also the only like faction centered around like women. So that's pretty cool. I, that definitely gives them bonus points. Like they have some really cool looking mech stuff. It's just expensive. I think that's the only thing bringing them down really is that. It costs a lot. I don't think they're too hard to paint if you want to go like with the base, the classic color on the box. A lot of it's black, you should be alright. Dr. Sororitas, yeah, really good faction, should be okay. Alright, next we have Necrons. Necrons are going in made for beginners. Necrons, I think, are a great beginner army. They're really, really great to paint. I do have a Necron army and I was so happy to paint them after painting my Admech army. Prime them black, dry brush them with metallics and Tesseract Glow. They look really, really good. You can do your full army that way super fast and super efficiently and they'll come out really good. Playing wise also, I think they're pretty beginner friendly because they're very resilient. They come back from the dead when they die because they're all robots, undead robots. They're they're very fun to play, very easy to learn, I would say. And uh, I guess maybe the only downside is that they are a bit of a horde army. You do want a lot of Necron warriors they should still be fairly cheap if you want to buy them on the secondhand market, you should be okay. But yeah, Necrons, I would say made for beginners. Uh, another faction also that's like kind of the bad guy, but in a fun way. Uh, yeah, next we have Titans. If this is your first time getting into 40k, do not pick Titans. Um, they're, they're Chaos Knights on steroids. They're like, you're gonna have one Titan against someone's entire army. It's just not, it's just not the best way to start the game. Not only are they weird to play rules-wise, they're so expensive. They don't make, make sense to buy. You have to buy them from Forge World. So they're gonna be resin, which is way harder to work with and way more expensive for an inferior product. Yeah, it's just not a great place to start. They look great. Play a couple, uh, maybe, you know, have a, have a faction first, play a couple games of 40k, and then decide if you still really, really want a Titan because they're not for everybody. All right, we got a few more. Next we have Drukhari. Uh, these are basically the Dark Eldar. Yeah, the Dark Elves are really cool lore-wise. Uh, I think they're a bit of an expensive army, but man, some of their models are just so cool. And they do have a really decent combat patrol, honestly. So I'm gonna put Dark Eldar and you'll have a good time. I'd say the only thing holding them back is that in the lore, from what I've heard, they're kind of supposed to have like three sub-factions, like the witches, the incubi, which are like monstrosities, and then the warriors. And apparently they're just like not super well like defined as being separate fa sub-factions. So that's kind of holding them back. I do wish they would give them a little more support for that. But I think as it stands, I think you'll have a good time. Um, another villainous faction, like really nothing good about the Dark Eldar. Like if you're in their world, it's pretty dark. So you'll have a good time with them, they're pretty cool. Uh, next we have the Tau. The tower really interesting. The tower one of the factions I almost consider starting with because they're so Gundam. There's like if you like Evangelion or anime, like the tower is so cool. And I think it's really cool that they're in this universe that they have kind of like a mech style faction. I'd say the only thing holding them back is if you want to paint them white like they are on the box, white is like the hardest color to paint. So that is not very beginner friendly because uh yeah, you're not gonna have a good time learning how to paint with white. And you also, depending on how you build the army, you're gonna need a lot of infantry. Uh they're also super uh, they're super focused on being a shooting army so i'm gonna say if you want to start with tau you should be okay but be warned white is hard to paint with so maybe choose your own paint scheme and you're gonna be buying a lot of infantry next we have death watch death watch is my least favorite of the divergent chapters for space marines i'm sorry death watch players it's a really cool idea being the alien hunter faction of the Space Marines, but I don't think it's a great execution. 
out of all the Divergent chapters, they definitely have the least going on as far as unique models. Uh, and rules-wise, I don't feel like they're that strong right now. Yeah, if you got into Death Watch, you just might be a little disappointed with, like, the lack of options with them. Not my favorite choice, unfortunately. Chaos Space Marines, uh, getting into it, you might think that they're gonna have just as much support as regular Space Marines, but they really don't. A lot of their stuff is outdated. I think if you want to get into Chaos Space Marines, you're gonna have a better time getting into one of the Divergent Chaos Space Marine chapters, like Death Guard or Thousand Suns or World Eaters. Yeah, if you want to get into, like, Night Lords or, uh, Iron Warriors, you kind of have to do it yourself with Chaos Space Marines. There's not a lot of, like, chapter or faction support within Chaos Space Marine. It all looks the same. Like, all this stuff for Chaos Space Marines kind of feels like they just want you to play, uh, Black Legion, like, with Abaddon, like, the Sons of Horus kind of thing. I'm just not a huge fan of that. It's a little boring to me. So because of that, and also because they have a, some outdated stuff, I'm gonna say Chaos Space Marines, as a beginner, are a bit of a tough choice. Just because it's not, yeah, it's not the most beginner friendly. Um, super cool. Lore-wise, one of the coolest. I can't even deny that. Like, I love the Night Lords. And they did just make some new Night Lords models for, uh, for the kill team. As it stands, I would say Chaos Space Marines are a bit of a tough choice for beginners. Um, Followed up by Imperial Guard, one of my favorite factions, and another tough choice, but you do have really, really good reasons for playing Imperial Guard. Um, they're one of the coolest factions. Like, I don't know what gets cooler than Imperial Guard, because they're just humans with, like, super basic-looking weaponry, artillery, and they're going up against aliens and demons. Like, it is so cool thematically. But you have to get a lot. Imperial Guard is definitely a horde army. You're gonna want a lot of guardsmen. You're gonna want a lot of tanks. Points per dollar, they're also like Admech, very low on the points per dollar list. But they do have a lot more support than Admech, which is why they're not in GW Hates You. Uh, they have some starter boxes. They have decent combat patrols. One thing about uh, Imperial Guard is there's a lot of sub-factions that are really popular, like Krieg's one of them, for example, that just doesn't, doesn't feel like it has enough support. It's just really hard to play anything that's not just Cadian. That's pretty much the only Imperial Guard they actually make. So if you wanted to play those other sub-factions, I think you have to use like Forge World upgrades sprues, which would not be fun. So yeah, because of the cost and because of like the lack of sub-faction support, I would say Imperial Guard's a bit of a tough choice. But Super fun, and honestly one of my favorite armies to play against thematically, just because they're just human beings. Human beings against aliens is so cool. Like, I know that there's human beings inside those Space Marine armor suits, but like, let's be honest, they're barely humans at this point. And like, Imperial Guard are like, they're just people. Super sick. So if you're curious why I didn't rank the stuff at the bottom of the list, those are just Space Marine chapters. They really are all the same. <laughs> These are like the non-divergent ones, so they each have like one, chapter master model, um, and then the rules are just different for playing the game. But I would say they're all, those are all pretty much the same. They're just Space Marines. They're all, they're all good. You should just pick whatever ones you think have the coolest color or have the coolest uh, play style. Those are fine. And I didn't rank the Chaos Gods, but that's just because of the whole Chaos and Divided thing. Like, they don't need their own ranking. They're, uh, it doesn't really matter how they play, to be honest. And, or, or like, collect. Like, all, all of the Demon Chaos Gods are gonna be the same to collect. Yeah. So that's why I didn't touch those, if you were curious. Well, thanks for watching my tier ranking video. Uh, let me know if you guys agree or disagree with anything I said today. I'm sure I'm gonna get some good comments down below of people taking me apart because I hated on their faction. I'm sorry. Again, I don't think any of these factions are inherently bad. I'm just ranking them on how beginner friendly I believe there are and as a hobby Warhammer 40k is not already the most beginner friendly so I think if we can narrow down what factions are the easiest to start with for people it could be helpful. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like. Feel free to subscribe and have a good day. Emperor protects.